This video is to be uploaded on Lord Willing on June the 23rd or the 24th, no later than the 25th of 2024, 2024. Hi everybody, this is Angelo Quinones and you reach I Am Ministries. I Am Ministries is designed to give you uh, to give you <laughs> my baby, my baby, <laughs> it's confusing me. To give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's holy and inspired word, the Bible. And so that's just the deal. So she interrupted me right off the bat. She didn't even wait for the middle of the study. That's just the deal. Out of the pain. So, welcome to the Anastasis series. Anastasis means resurrection. In Greek, anastasis is one of the most important words I have to do with the bodily resurrection of Jesus. And I'm trying to teach, and I have established through the scriptures, that Jesus rose from the dead in the same body that he had as a birthday suit, as a baby. He only had one body during the, during the incarnation. He didn't switch bodies. Another, another body wasn't given to him. God the Father didn't give him another body. And why am I saying that? Well, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus. I don't know why. We saw it in uh, the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the Acts of the Apostles, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, uh, Philippians, Colossians, uh, the book of Revelation, 1 Peter, no doubt the Hebrews had it, has it, I didn't even go there yet, and so that's just the deal. So, Anastasis means resurrection, and Egero means I raised, if it's, you know, like a get, uh, a get the, with a theta and eta, a th and, and an e, you know, feta and eta nowadays call, that means that he is, he has been risen from the dead. So there are different Greek words that, that, that prove without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ our Lord was raised from the dead in the same body that he had as a birthday suit. And that's very important. We have to believe in the resurrection in order to be saved. No one can be saved without believing in the resurrection of Jesus. Now, my daughter is a special child. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about people that have a handicap to such a degree that can they cannot think, uh, they cannot call upon the name of the Lord. Those those people and children are covered by special grace and mercy. Uh, Jesus said, let the little children come unto me. So those, you know, I don't have to worry about my, my daughter Anna Devane believing in Jesus because she's covered by special grace. A, a special mercy has been laid upon her. I will have mercy upon whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion upon whom I have compassion, said God in Romans chapter 9, verse uh, what? Verse uh, 15. You understand what I'm saying? But if you can believe, and if you don't, if you refuse, well, then you will be guilty as charged and not believing in the resurrection of Jesus. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, if you if you believe in your heart, Greek word cardia, and believe that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That is the condition and that is the key. If you can believe in a resurrection, okay, that's the that's the that's the coup de gras. Again, that's the key. Now we studied the resurrection of Jesus, especially in the Acts in the Acts of the Apostles, where it is mentioned in chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 13, 17, 25, and 26. Out of the 28 chapters, scores of chapters are literally peppered with the resurrection of Jesus, which is the capstone of Christianity. Remove it and all else crumbles. It is the singular doctrine that elevated Christianity above all the pagan religions of the world. End quote. That is that without the resurrection, there is no crucifixion applied to us. And the Apostle Paul said, if Christ is not risen, you are yet in your sins. Okay, so the resurrection is what makes the crucifixion complete. It makes it perfect. You understand what I'm saying? You can't have one without the other. And that's what we're studying in this series called Anastasis or Resurrection. The subtitle is... Somatica Anastasis to Yesu Christu Kuriu Hemon. The bodily, Somatica is bodily, the bodily resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Well, let's get to it. We already studied, okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14. 
Now um, we go to okay chapter. Let me see if I'm here. Yes, I am. Chapter five and verse fifteen. And there you have the two. You have the crucifixion and resurrection, I believe, in that verse of scripture. And so that's just the deal. She's eat, she's uh, drinking the milk on the food. Okay, that's good. My wife uh, Risa is uh, feeding our baby Anna Devain uh, food via a bottle. And that's just the deal. Now, it says over here, recorded in the NASB, verse uh, 15 of chapter 5 of Corinthians Beta, or 2 Corinthians. And he, meaning Christ, died for all, meaning his elect, meaning his sheep. Okay? And, uh, and he died for all, so that they, meaning the all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died, meaning for Christ, who died and this is the deal, this is the deal, rose again on the third on on on, on their behalf. Okay. Who rose again on their behalf. So over here you have crucifixion and resurrection in the same verse of scripture. That he died and that but he rose again from the dead. You know what I'm saying? That's just a deal. So he 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 rose. He rose. That's just a deal. Now let's continue to look at the English and then we're gonna look at the Greek because just in case Jehovah's Witnesses come to us and debate, campaigns and discussions, you understand? And then they challenge us saying, Well, where is the bodily resurrection of Jesus? Well the the you know the founder of Charles uh, the founder of Jehovah's Witnesses, Charles Taze Russell, he was the founder, he was their 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 president, their, their founder. And he said, wrongly so, he said in the volume, uh, volume chapter 5, Studies of the Scriptures, he said, quote, on page 454, okay, this is just, this is, this is almost blasphemy. He said this, he said, the man Christ Jesus is dead forever dead, end quote. Well, that's because of Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't believe. We don't teach that. We believe the man Christ Jesus is alive forever alive, because that's what the Scriptures teach. It teaches us here. It teaches us in all of the verses that we saw. First Peter chapter, first Peter chapter one verse three. Galatians chapter one verse one. First Corinthians chapter fifteen verses four, 15, uh, 12, 15, 20, All across the board. Okay, Revelation chapter one verses five, uh, eight, eighteen. Chapter two verse eight. You understand what I'm saying? So that's and we just saw Colossians chapter one, verses 15, 18, uh, uh, verses 15, 18, chapter two, verses 12 and 13, and chapter three, verse one. And we saw it in the Synoptic Gospels. Okay, see, oh, that's good. Two bottles on? Oh, that's good, great. And we saw it in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In uh, Matthew chapter chapter 16, I mean, it's predicted by Jesus himself, you know, at the, the Caesarean Council. But it's in all of the resurrection chapters of uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 6, Mark chapter 16, verse 6, Luke chapter 24, verse 6, you understand what I'm saying? And John chapter 20, verse 9, where there's an infinitive there to rise, or whatever the case may be. The others are Aris passive constructions in each of those resurrection chapters of the Synoptic Gospels. We saw it in, in practice, Apostle along the Acts of the Apostles, several times. More in chapter 13 than any other chapter. Chapter 13, verse 30, 33, 34, and 37, all across the board. And that God the Father raised up Jesus from the dead. Chapter 2, verses 24, and 31, and 32. And we saw it in chapter 3, 4, and 5 in verses 15, 10, and 30, respectively. Chapter 1, verse 3. And a couple of times in chapters, uh, chapters uh, 10, uh, verses 40 and 41, I believe. And chapter 17, a couple of times there. And in chapter 25 of the Acts of the Apostles, uh, I believe in chapter 19 and chapter 26, verse 23. 
You understand what I'm saying? So basically, you see the resurrection peppered throughout the New Testament and throughout uh, even the Old Testament in shadows and types and figures, Isaac being released, the bird being released with blood on his wings or at least one wing and the goat being released. You understand what I'm saying? Isaac being released. I think I said that already. And uh, the resurrection being uh, foreshadowed by David the prophet in Psalm 16, verse 10. And in the Greek Septuagint, sometimes you see it in, uh, in, in the Psalm 16, verse 10. Sometimes you see it in 15, 10. I mean, so you see it in all of those scriptures. I'm not, I'm not even finished yet. Okay, we didn't even mention, you understand what I'm saying, uh, Romans, uh, uh, the book of Romans and uh, some other books of the Bible. You understand what I'm saying? So that's just it. Well, okay, that's it. Now, um, let's get back to this. Now, um, let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter, okay, a couple of chapters down. Chapter 13 and verse, I believe, let me see, did I forget where it was? Or verse 4, I think. I think it was verse 4, right? I think I'm right. I just put this to memory. So it's just a deal. Let's see if I'm right, yeah? I'll, I'll be on a limb. <laughs> For indeed, he, okay, meaning Christ, was crucified because of weakness, yet he, meaning Christ, lives because of the power of God. For we also are weak in him, yet we will live with him because of the power of God directed toward you. Now, it says over here that he lives by the power of God. Now, that's meaning that he that he was raised from the dead. He lives. Okay, he's, no, he's no longer cru crucified. He's no longer dead. You understand what I'm saying? Let's read this, 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 again, at least part of it anyway. But indeed, he, meaning Christ, was uh, crucified because of uh, weakness. Yet, he lives because of the power of God, meaning the power that he used in the resurrection. Okay, that power was used, okay, in the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. Power probably doing the miss of the Greek. We're gonna check it out. You understand what I'm saying? So, basically, and let me read, um, just for your edification of the verse that we read, okay, before the study, okay, Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14. Because I saw the resurrection of Jesus at least three times in this epistle, in this letter, okay, so uh, so that caps it off. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14, chapter 5, verse 15, and um, chapter uh, 13, verse 4. Uh, let's go to verse 14, because maybe some people didn't see uh, that study. So we're going to check it out again for our, our building up, for our edification. Well, this is over here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14, knowing that Hati, for that he who, okay, and he who is um, basically an article there, uh, he who I think is Ha there, he who raised, okay, raised, and that is a get us, a get us, that's a, that's a, that's a, I think that's an Aris participle active, okay, I know it's a participle definitely. Okay, uh, again, that's because Alpha and Sigma is there, and that's a case ending. Okay, tagged with the participle, you know, a verbal. You got the two systems. You got in the participle, you got the verbal system and the noun system. The case ending anyway in that system. Uh, who raised the Lord, who raised the Lord. Okay, so Tan Kurian, so it has to be in the accusative case. Tan uh, Kurian, uh, uh, Jesus, and I think that's, I think that's Yasun there. Okay, a will raise us. Now, that's a liquid future. It's the same construction almost, except for the personal ending. Okay, the primary act of personal ending. When when Jesus said, I will raise it up again as a ghetto, without the iota. Okay, a ghetto. That's a liquid future without the epsilon and sigma. And a, a gete is there recorded um, 
for the for, for the second time the ghetto is used tagged by 1453 in this verse okay so the first time the word for raised a ghetto uh, actually uh, a get a uh, participle construction is for Jesus that's meant for him okay to describe his resurrection to teach his resurrection okay the second time that a ghetto is used is is a liquid future and that's meant for our future uh, to to uh, for, uh, foretell our future resurrection okay so that, so that's just a deal so you got to get twice over there and we saw that in our last study so we don't have to see the Greek again if you're interested in that um, just see I will probably put the title like um, Anastasis uh, the Anastasis series second uh, Corinthians chapter chapter 4 verse uh, what is it? Chapter 4, verse 14, something like that, you know. Okay? So you see a participle, a ghetto, and a participial construction, which is continuous, okay? And uh, a ghetto as a future, uh, as, a, as a liquid future, okay? A liquid future, it simply means that the stem, the, the, the stem, the root or the stem of the word, okay, uh, ends in a liquid. And what are liquids? Well, the R... M, like in Mary, N, like in Nilda, uh, 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 L, like in Larry, sounding letters in Greek. Those are liquids, okay? Uh, uh, Rho, Mu, Nu, and um, Lambda, okay? Mu nowadays called me, and Nu nowadays called me. You understand what I'm saying? Those are liquids. You have dentals, you got labials, you got liquids, and, and, and gutturals, and all this other stuff. You understand what I'm saying? That's just the deal. When it ends in a liquid, the future tense form of epsilon and sigma in the case of a liquid drop off. Okay? So that's just it. That's why I think that in the act of construction, it might have been, and I didn't add this, um, because, uh, you know, you, you haven't seen, I haven't seen a paradigm. It could be new in the towel. It could be Omicron in the towel. In my opinion, I thought, you know, I, I said that it could be new in the towel. When you, when you think about it, I think it might have been Omicron and Tau, because if the Epsilon and Sigma was there, uh, you know, and the Sigma was between the Epsilon and Omicron, well, that's why it dropped off, because it's a, it's a, it's a intervocalic Sigma and it drops off, okay? Now, the new and the Tau tends to drop off anyway, and you see that in Ponce, in that, in that, in that uh, construction, you see Ponce and a lexicon. But it might have been, uh, but I think, um, ege, 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 let me see, it'll be ege, <laughs> my baby last <laughs> ege, re, satas, ege, re, satas, and not ege, re, sentas, I mean, that, 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 I think that I would have constructed it as a Greek, with the Omicron and Tau, which is the alternate um, active participial morphine. But, I mean, if you want to look at it, just check out um, in the Morphology of Greek by William D. Mouse, Dr. William D. Mouse, and, uh, and you might see it there in his book. Okay, you might see it there in, his, in, that, in that glorious book. I haven't picked up the book yet. I want to see if I can pick it up. So um, it might be there. If it, it can't be anything else. It can't be a feminine construction and a passive. So it cannot be mena, mene, usa, huia. That's out. And it's not omega and nu, okay? Even though that's active, uh, it can't be omega and nu. You understand? Uh, because omega and nu tend to, tend to stick around. Uparchon, zone, labon. You understand what I'm saying? Haon. They, they tend to stay, those those tend to stay around because you can't do anything else. How much you want to shave off? You understand what I'm saying? So I, I, I don't think it can't be that. So it has to be either the Nuna Tower was dropped off and it get, uh, and it get us or uh, the Omicron Tower was dropped off. And I, I'm leaning toward, uh, in this particular study, that it was Omicron Tower that was dropped off because it, the, the Sigma is called the intervocalic Sigma and it, and it will drop off between the Epsilon and Omicron and then Omicron and Tau won't hang around uh, too much because of the case ending. For, 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 you know, for pronunciation purposes, the first construction with the Omicron and Tau is more perfect sounding-wise than the Nuna Tau after the Sigma. 
You understand what I'm saying? So that's just a tell. But anyway, pick up the morphology of Greek, and they'll probably have it there. That's not that's not greatly important. What's important is that First Corinthians chapter four verse fourteen has the resurrection of Jesus yet again in the New Testament. All right, now so let's look at the Greek. The Greek is the deal. The Greek is the standard, and not the King James. You know what I'm saying? This idea, and I don't know how this, I don't know how this came out to be. How it came to be in the minds of some people that the King James is the standard. It's a standard. You're trying to tell me I love the King James. I just, I just was hearing Alexander Scorby's <laughs> absolutely almost impeccable. The King James. I love the King James. And Isaiah in the reading of the King James is so glorious. I love it in the King. I love it in the King James. I'm used to the King James, but I'm not a King James only dude. And I, I understand. That the that the that the end all be all of the of the listen is the, is the, are the original languages of of Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic and throw in there a little bit of Egyptian and stuff like that. That's the deal. That's the coup de gras. That's the key. It's not it's not English. It's not even this this translation right right. I mean, well, you know, just, I mean, you know, just, I just switched. Okay, <laughs> the NASB. It's, it's nothing is the standard except for the original languages of the Bible. Not even, nothing is a standard. Hi, hon. I have to placate my child, you know, Anna Devane. Hi, my love. Yeah. <laughs> so that's just a, I love my baby, you know. She's a special child. She's just a, just a, she's just a sweet. I mean, she is, I mean, goodness gracious. She's so sweet. She's just a, adorable. She really is. She just looks like a, a beautiful porcelain doll, you know what I mean? That's just it. My baby. Anna Devane. Can you believe that I had uh, two children? In the, in the Philippines, and I named uh, each of them after uh, WSB secret agents, Anna Devane and Sean Donnelly from General Hospital. And that's just the deal. Sean means God is gracious, and Anna means beautiful or grace. So, I mean, they're, they're beautiful uh, names to boot. You know what I mean? And I praise God for them. Having uh, children, you know, in my old age. Okay, is that? Because I am 59 years old, and I had Anna uh, through my wife uh, at the age of, what, 53? And Sean about uh, 57, I think. I, was, I think it was 57, 57 years. When I was 57 or 58, something like that. Gotta look, I gotta look back. I think I was 57 when he was born, and then I became 58 about a month after. So that's kind of tricky. Okay, <laughs> that's just a deal. Well, let's look at this. This is the Kraki uh, passage of Scripture. Uh, Second Corinthians, you understand? Uh, verse five, and uh, what was it? I gotta, I gotta put this to, to memory. You know, fifteen, right? So I'm remind, I'm reminding myself of the scripture along with you guys. Okay. All right. Now, uh, so that's just that I want to look at an ob ob objection of the bodily resurrection of Jesus that's actually uh, used by Jehovah's Witnesses in verse 16, actually. Okay? So I want to do that as an appendix, or if, I, you know, if my baby's acting okay, then I could, then I could uh, check it out with you guys, you know, live. But if not, then, you know, I'll, I'll wait until the morning time or when she's asleep. And say, who is it there? Oh, you did water? Uh, okay, thank you, Godfrey. I'm doing a Bible study, so I have to be quiet, okay? You want something? You want juice or something? You want to take a juice? You, you want juice? Wait, what are you doing? Wait, 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 a pillow? I'll be good, okay? No, no fighting or nothing with the baby. The baby's sleeping, okay? So be quiet, because I'm doing uh, a Bible study. Thanks for the water. He, he drew water at the well. We have a well right next to the house, and uh, so my stuff's on. He, he, he drew water. Um, and I, I, I do. <laughs> That's why I'm yawning. I'm so tired, guys. I, I, I do water also, but thank God he helps, and my, my wife helps from time to time. But I do most of the drawing. But my stepson, he's been doing it uh, lately. Anyway, he's been good lately. Anyway, all right. So let's get back to this. Is that over? Now I just want to mention this because there's a lot of kai's and ha's and 
and Hatis and stuff like that. So that's just, you know, cut time a little bit. Hati is translated that for the most part. Kai can be translated into and also even both and stuff like that, you know. Uh, ha is a weak demonstrative, so it can be used as a pronoun, that one, or or uh, can be translated into the or oh with special uh, definiteness and stuff like that. And uh, and you got third person personal pronouns and first person personal pronouns and uh, second person personal pronouns and stuff like that. So I just wanted a cup time. And um, and so that's just a deal, okay? All right, so uh, that's just it. Now it says over here and, okay? Greek word kai, and as for uh, huper, all is panton. You take off the omega and the nu, and it's gender to plural, and you have this, the true, this true uh, root of the word, okay? This is an agenda, genitive case, a case of limitation as to kind. The accusative case is the, the case of lim- limitation, but as to extent. The extent of the raising that Jesus was raised exclusively. You understand what I'm saying? The extent of the relationship, you know, uh, uh, John 1 1 B, you know, pros ton theon, you understand what I'm saying? And the extent of the hearing, you know, Proxy Apostle Lonely Acts of the Apostles, chapter 22, verse 9. Not that they didn't hear the voice, they, they didn't understand the voice, you understand what I'm saying? And so that's just it. All right, so a uh, pont here is to stem and ponton, and that's just the deal. And for all, this is over here in this broken rhythm English, he died. Now, this is an AIA, this is an Aris indicative active. This is a completed action, okay? Um, now, um, you have a preposition here. But the, the augment is not tagged after the preposition or on the preposition. It's not, it's not linked up to that. It's linked up to the second word, okay? Uh, and so that's just the deal. Tha, tha ne sko, tha ne sko, okay? So that's just it. Um, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You see the epsilon here. This is a second arrow's construction. If it was a first Aris uh, construction, it would be Sigma and Epsilon. But this is second Aris uh, Epsilon over here. Okay, if this was a first, first Aris, it can be also Sigma and Alpha. And so that's just the deal. Or just Alpha will be second Aris. Okay, so first Aris will be a Sigma Alpha or a Sigma Epsilon. And the third person singular. And then, and then, and then, and then. The new is a secondary act of personal ending from the new sigma nothing side of the paradigm. As I lose my voice, and probably as the King James only cares. Apa is here, but it's abbreviated, okay, uh, because of the augment uh, that's before the the data. Now it's called fita, okay. That's just it. So is is a complete in action in past time, okay. Not all arrows are created equal. This this has to do with time. Some arrows don't have to do with time. Some arrows don't have to do with completed actions like arrows, uh, constructions, and participles. Okay? Participles are continuous all the time. It's like the imperfect tense. He died. Okay? Ape thanen. Ape thanen. He died. You understand what I'm saying? Meaning Jesus died. That Greek word hina. Ah, it might be a subjunctive coming up here. Hey, now there's a good clue. Uh, those, and that's hoy. And remember what, 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 what I said about the, the article that can be, uh, can't work like a pronoun. You see, those, you see, you see. Weak, it's called a weak demonstrative, like I said before. Living, okay, zontes, and that's a participle, a PPA construction, and an NMP construction. So you have the noun system and uh, tags after the verbal system. Now, zo is the stem here that contains the meaning of, of, of uh, life or, or living, if you will. Uh, to live, I don't want to make an infinitive out of it. And in the new tau is an active, is the active uh, participial morphine. Okay, the other one uh, in the masculine side of the active uh, uh, 
construction is Omicron Tau, but this is not Omicron Tau. This is New Tau. We were talking, I was talking about that earlier. And then you have the Epsilon Sigma, just like in Pontus, you know, uh, as the case ending here, a nominal to plural, a case ending Epsilon and Sigma. Okay, Zontes, living, you understand? That's just it. Living. No longer, okay, no longer, Meketi. Meketi, no longer two of themselves. He altois. He altois. Okay, he altois. This is a reflective uh, pronoun in the dative case. This, the order sigma, final sigma proven that. <coughs> okay, he altois. You understand? Themselves. Should live, and that's the participle right there. Should live, and that's zosin. Okay, uh, a subjunctive. Did I say participle? Subjunctive, I, I should have said. Uh, present subjunctive active. Okay, third person, a uh, third person, uh, plural. Zosin. Okay, zosin. And so that's, that's it. Zosin. You know what I'm saying? So that's just it. And uh, spelled out Zeta, Omega, Sigma, Iota, Nu. Who's that? And then Aula, Alpha, Lambda, Lambda, Alpha means but, but this, but that, you know, A L L A. You understand what I'm saying? To, huh? To the one, and that's To, that's the date of article from the Tote To sign of the paradigm for Huper, for uh, Huper, uh, them, uh, Alton. And that's a genitive uh, third person personal pronoun. Having died, okay, apa than the, what is this? Apa the nanti, having died, that's an aris participle active construction. The new in the tau is there, and the iota in the singular uh, is there. Okay, it cannot subscribe underneath the tau, so that's just the deal. And Greek word Kai, having been raised, there you go, having been raised again. Again, again, then T. Now, why is it theta and epsilon in the uh, passive here? Because it's a participle. That's why. It's a participle. So it's not theta and eta, it's theta and epsilon. New Natal participial morphing is there. Do not say this is active just because of the new Natal. Avoid it like you do your appendix when you're reading this, okay? If you're reading data and epsilon, new Natal, just avoid the new Natal and just classify it as a as a as a, as a, as a, as a passive. It's just 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 there's two people in the curtain. Don't don't look don't pay attention to the second person in the curtain, okay? That's what I was saying. Uh, that's just it. So it says over here, having been raised again, meaning Jesus has been raised again. Egertenti. Egertenti. Uh, and the iota, the I, is a dative um, case ending here. And remember that the case ending is tagged right after the participle. Okay, so Jesus had been raised from the dead, and as it says it here in verse 15 of chapter 5 of uh, of uh, Second Corinthians, tagged by 1453. So it's the same Greek word that we saw all across the board in the Synoptic Gospels in each of the resurrection chapters in verse 6. Egero is a gerte, he has been raised, he has been raised, he has been raised. From the dead, Necron, the dead, from the dead ones, from Sheol. This is the teaching. When Jesus died, his spirit was taken by God the Father, because Jesus said, Father, into your hands I commit or entrust my spirit. So at the point of death, Jesus, okay, Jesus' spirit was taken by God the Father and placed into Sheol. Where's Sheol? Where, where is it? Where's Sheol? Sheol is in the middle of this planet, in the middle of the earth, in the center of the earth. I'm not talking about on top of the earth. I'm talking about in the middle of this globe. Okay, the, the, the planet is like a big ball. 
okay in the middle if you, if you if my son plays with a ball all the time so if i have the ball in my hand in the middle in the if you could put your finger in the middle of that plastic ball that he plays with that's where that's an example of where okay the dead are right now meaning the unbelievers they're in in their sole existence in the middle of this world in the middle of it not on top of it not around it in the middle of it their souls are there waiting to be judged the last day which we call the second resurrection you understand what i'm saying so the believers go straight to the presence of god but the non-believers are waiting in the middle of this earth that's where jesus went he was there for three days and three nights preaching ekeruksen is the arist he preached ekeruksen was that recorded in first uh, first peter chapter uh, 3 verse 19. He was there for three days and three nights. He was someplace. So his his body was in a new tomb, but his spirit was in Sheol preaching the gospel. He must have been preaching the gospel. He must have been preaching about himself. Now, who was he preaching to? Well, the people that he was preaching to died a very long time ago during the flood of Noah. It says that he went to preach to the spirits that were disobedient at the time of Noah at the flood of Noah. Why did he go to that group of people specifically? I think that the Bible doesn't doesn't say. But he went there to preach. He finished the preaching, so he uses an arist. The arist is a completed action. He preached. Period. Now, after the three days and three nights, God the Father lifted Jesus' soul from the middle of this globe and placed the body back into, I mean, placed the soul back into the body that was in the tomb and thus the body became clinically alive again and thus he was risen from the dead in the same body that he had as a birthday suit that's the resurrection the resurrection is that jesus okay was put to death according to the flesh according to the body but was made alive again in the same body that died. It wasn't another body. He didn't take another body. The same body that he had as a baby and that he had as a 12-year-old 12, 12 and that he had as a 30-year-old and the, the same body that was crucified and the same body that was buried in the new tomb was the same body that arose from the dead on the third day. It's the same body that went to heaven. It's the same body that's going to come back down. It's the same body that everybody's going to see on the cloud of glory. So when Jesus comes back, it's going to be in the same body that he had while he was here. Okay, that's just as simple as that. If you believe it in your heart that God the Father rose Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. Because you're believing, uh, I mean, the capstone of Christianity. You're believing the message, okay, that God wants you to believe. Okay, you're trusting in his crucifixion and his resurrection that it was made for you. And that you're not trusting in yourself anymore. And so that's just the deal. Now, my baby is acting up. So I don't know if I can finish this study. You understand what I'm saying? So let's go, okay quickly let's run okay <laughs> before she you know gets naughty but she has an excuse she's a special child let's go to uh you know a second corinthians in the last chapter now the resurrection of jesus is found and recorded in first in second corinthians chapter 4 verse 14 chapter 5 verse 15 and now we go to chapter 13 verse 4 those are all over the place is one of the main teachings of the Bible, the resurrection of Jesus. And so that's just the deal. Now, um, what, what is this though? Okay, did I, did I, did I, did I, did I? Let me see. Oh, okay, these are the verses. Okay, so let me just punch up uh, verse four there. It says over here in Greek word Kai, for gar, that's a post positive, post positive, gamma alpha rho, for he was crucified okay what's this this is a very long greek word okay and uh, 
stau rote. Now it was done to him. Jesus didn't crucify himself. It was he was crucified. Other people crucified him. It wasn't the other way around that he was crucifying himself. No, he was crucified. So the data and eta is here. The aorist passive is here. See the data and eta. The last of two Greek letters. Ah, data and eta. Now they call feet and eta is proving the aorist passive construction. Okay, that he was crucified. That's a fact. He was crucified. Estarothe, he was crucified in, and that's X there, X in, uh, let me see what it says over here, in, where I lost my place, in weakness, okay, Aste neas, in weakness, and that's in a genitive con uh, a construction. Probably the genitive of description. Ah, uh, let me see. Aste neas, and that's just the deal in weakness. Yet, Allah, that's not the God of the Muslims, guys. Please, A L L A in Greek is not the God of the Muslims. Allah, it's, it's, uh, Alpha Lambda Lambda Alpha means but. But this, but that. I'm I'm going to the store, but I'm coming back. That's 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 Allah. That's not the God of the Muslims. Come on. Alpha Landa Landa Alpha or A L L A in Greek means but this but that. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Yet it is translating uh, that conjunction there. Uh, he lives, meaning Christ lives. Zay. Okay, Zay. He lives by, okay, by the power or do not me us. Do not me us. Okay, the power of God. Theu. Theu means of God. Theu means of God. Also, Greek word Kai for God. We, and that's uh, Hemes from the Hemes. Hemon, Hemin, uh, Hemas paradigm. Uh, weak. Uh, stay. Numen. Weak in. Greek word N for N. Or N for N. Okay. Him, Auto. But, you see, Aula. See, but. But we will live, it says over here. We will live. Ze. Zesamen. This is a this is in the future tense. When I say in, in that I'm going to do something in the future, I use will. I will go to the store. The Greeks don't do that. They use a sigma. They use an s, and they put it inside the Greek word to showcase the future tense. So that's why the sigma is here as a future tense formative. Formative. Why is forming the word in the future? Ze. Ze samen. The Omicron is a connecting vowel, and the men is where we get the we from. Okay, men. Okay, as a primary active um, uh, personal ending. Okay, uh, amen, uh, et, uh, amen, et, uh, amen, et, uh, amen, et, uh, amen, et, uh, usi, or uh, men, te, usi, unsi. Okay, usi. <laughs> and so what I'm saying? We will live. Okay, ze samen. We will live with uh, soon. We will live with him, meaning Jesus, out all. By, and that's ek preposition. Now, am I missing an article over here? By, just says by, by power. Do na me os. Of God, of God is Deu. Of God is Deu over here. Toward you. Okay, and that's Ace Humas. Now let's check out, before we close the study, let's check out the construction again for, um, for, the, for the resurrection of Jesus. And that's just the deal. We will live. That's, for, that's us, though. We will live. Uh, let's check out the construction here. Where is this? What here? 
our week. Let me see. Also for we. Dunamis. And that's, that has to be near here. Okay, this is fine and dandy. He lives. Now, that's simply Z. Z E in in English. Okay? He lives. This is in the present tense, present indicative active. Present tense um that has to do with tense. Uh the I has to do with um indicative has to do with the mood of reality. If I say I am fat, well I am I'm saying, you know, uh, I'm giving you what I think is a fact, okay, <laughs> so it was, uh, indicative, it's a, it's a mood of a projected reality, and um, and uh, A over here has to do with uh, the active uh, mood, active mood, he lives, Z, spelled out Zeta, is a Z in Greek, Zeta, Eta, and with a Yoda underneath it, the I underneath it, you understand what I'm saying, so that's just the deal, so this is these two letters, really three, but these two letters means he lives. He lives. Z. Now, according to our study, Anastasis, this is the shortest Greek word for the resurrection of Jesus so far in our study. Z is very easy to remember. Z E Z. He lives. Now, you, I mean, if you can't remember that, I don't. I mean, I just don't understand. Hi, my love. Daddy's sicky, my love. Daddy's sicky. <laughs> Daddy's sicky, my love. <laughs> now, my, my daughter stops crying and laughs when she's when she hears that I'm sick. I don't know why. Hi, honey. <laughs> I mean, I just you know, it could be the King James curse, and my my, my, my daughter's laughing. It's just the deal. So the deal is that he lives. Zay. Look at that. Zay. I mean, that is the shortest Greek word. I, 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 it can't be any shorter than two letters. Uh, and uh, my uh, my baby, I think, threw a pillow on me. Uh, that's just the deal. Hi, hi, my lovey. Say hello. Hi. Don't wave with your hand. They can't see you. I mean, that's just it. Say hi. This is Sean Donnelly. You know, Sean, he's got his gracious. Hello. He just woke up. <sighs> well, that's just a deal. Well, guys, we saw the resurrection of Jesus found and recorded to finish the study. And basically, because I went over what we studied before in uh, verse 14 and chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians. And we also saw it in uh, uh, chapter 5 and verse 15 of this great book of comfort. You understand what I'm saying? Very, very comforting book. Second Corinthians, uh, hi, Anne. and then we saw it in uh, in Second Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse four. So we have three verses that have to do specifically, cogently, carefully, correctly, and clearly and plainly about the resurrection of Jesus, which is the capstone of Christianity. Remove it, and all else crumbles. It is the singular doctrine that elevated Christianity above all the pagan religions of the world. What am I saying? I'm saying the, the, the key of Christianity is a resurrection. If you take it away, there is no Christianity. If you take the resurrection of Jesus away, there is no Christianity. As a matter, as a matter of fact, the crucifixion of Jesus becomes useless if there is no resur resurrection from the dead of Jesus because the resurrection of Jesus is what makes the crucifixion of Jesus complete. That's just the deal. You understand what I'm saying? And that's the deal all across the board. This is Angelo Quinones giving glory to God the Father, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And that means that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were very much alive at the time that Jesus said those words. And, and Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob, okay, died hundreds of years before Jesus came on the scene. But Jesus said, okay, uh, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not that I was, but I am, meaning that they were still alive. Please subscribe to my channel. Please give me a thumbs up. And please leave your comment on the screen. Oh, praise God. 
of the resurrection of Jesus. Because he lives, we will live also. May you teach this to your family and friends because now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. How shall you escape if you neglect so great salvation? God is love, but also the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 that our God is a consuming fire. May you teach this to your to your loved ones and the, the ones closest to you before it is too late. Amen.